Hey everyone, I'm Chris, and this quick tip of the week is going to be orientation with a multi-rotor. Um, so basically if you're flying around and then lose orientation, uh, it's not as common on tricopters, but on uh, hexes and uh, quadcopters, you can run into where you lose what's front. Even if you have different colored props or tape the arms or put LEDs on it, you can still lose orientation, so it's good to know how to catch yourself and find out. This week's quick tip of the week is brought to you by Linuxgear.com. It's a new website, uh, United States located, and they're specializing in multi-rotor equipment that's not quite as common. Uh, they are going to be carrying some of the more common equipment, but they have some uh, specialized props that they've been working on for quite a while, designed mainly for multi-rotors. Uh, they have some different uh, equipment that can help you out in the field. Um, like at the end of this video, I'll show you some of their uh, landing pads, or helipads as you would, could call them. Um, that definitely help out and uh, I actually wouldn't be flying in this field without it because uh, I chose this field for a reason and it hasn't been cut uh, so the grass is very tall and the multi-rotor I'm going to be using for the demonstration I'd have to hand launch and I don't really like launching anything that's uh, over a five inch prop from my hand um, just because there's a lot spinning there so we'll uh, continue into the quick tip and I'll show you how to regain orientation Okay, so as we can see here, um, I'm not going to go too far out of range um, because you're not actually going to see the airframe. Um, so, if you were flying around and you lose orientation, let me uh, get back in frame here. There we go. And so you're doing a lot of spinning and things. You lose orientation. You have no clue where you're going. What you can do is if you punch it, get up somewhere where you feel safe, and then just move forward a little bit and you can feel where you're at. So I'm going to uh, get it within the window of the trees right there so you can actually see it. Okay, so you can see the shadow here and uh, basically what you do is you want to get away from objects, get to a comfortable height, and uh, let it calm, out, calm down and move forward. And you'll see that, okay, we were away from us. So now if I pull back, then it should start coming back. So it's pretty simple and it's a very effective technique. Um, I was actually shown when I first learned how to fly multi-rotor, uh, how to do this, and it really helps out. Um, when you're down near the ground, if you're under trees and stuff, you can't really do it. But if you have, try and get it as level as possible and then just watch it to see if it moves. If your left and right is opposite of you, then you know that you're facing you. If your front and back, forward moves it away from you and back moves it towards you, then you're facing you. So with stuff like that, it's pretty simple. Um, it is difficult to, uh, maintain orientation sometimes, like this one where all props are the same, all arms are the same. The only way you can really tell is if you have a uh, GoPro on the front, you can see it, uh, what the front is. So you really want to watch what you're doing and make sure, especially if you're flying around any sort of uh, object that can be damaged. You want to make sure that you know your orientation, you know exactly how you're flying, and try and be as safe as possible. So, getting away from everything, uh, just to reiterate, getting away from everything that you're uh, worried about. So, just fly as high as you're comfortable, and then watch which direction it goes when you start moving it forward. Um, you can see right now I'm actually fighting a lot of wind. So, uh, let's bring it back here and we'll get this thing in the land. So, as
as you can see here, these are the helipads that Renegear has. Um, they are really nice and they're a lot better than using a standard tarp because they are perforated, um, which reduces the ground effects when you come in contact with them because uh, it allows air to breathe through them. Um, you're not going to have an issue with, in the wind, wind getting under it and ripping it out of the ground. Um, that perforation really helps out. And even on multi-rotors that have uh, like peg landing gear, uh, they still set on it fine. So pretty much everything here, I have an example of a skid landing gear on the little tricopter. Uh, this one uses a CNC cut landing gear and this one uses just the standard pegs. So basically combining all of these gives you a good, a good example of what you can land on them. Uh, this is the largest that I would recommend for anything uh, 700 and above. Um, if you're looking at uh, aerial photography or anything like that and you want to take off in uh, some nicer places, uh, go get some scenes out uh, by the ocean, you really want to watch out for sand and debris like that. And that's where these will come in handy because the mesh will reduce all of the dust and stuff around that's right near your camera in the center. You may get some dust coming out from around the out outsides, but they're away from your lenses. And that's a key point of aerial photography. So having something nice and large that can give you a clean platform to take off from is a really good idea. Um, these I have just uh, with some cheap Walmart uh, tent posts holding it down. And I got it as tight as possible. That way it uh, had no chance of moving. Uh, this is the one that we'll be taking off from. And you can see right now that I roughly have two inches of clearance from the pad in the highest point to the prop. Now if I took the same thing and set it down in the grass, the props are about two inches below the level of the grass. And that's, I worked it down. Um, you have to think that when it starts, it's going to move a little bit and it'll settle down in the grass. If you just took it and just set it down, it still sinks way down in. So there's no possible way to take this off um, right now in the situation it is. But if we take it over, set it on our helipad here, now you can take off. You're not gonna have green props like this does right now. And uh, everything will be much better. If you do have a GoPro on it, which uh, my GoPro is out right now, um, forgot to charge the battery. But if you had a GoPro on it, you have less risk of blowing dust and debris into your lens on takeoff, just like with the uh, larger aerial photography equipment. Uh, the smaller one would work really well for any of the little uh, multi-rotors, the QAV250, the uh, Blackout 220, I guess is what he calls it, um, Blackout Hex, um, pretty much anything like that. The Hex, I would actually probably go with one of these, um, just because it's a little bigger, a little more room to land. Um, and if you are carrying a GoPro and things, they can move around a little bit when they get in with ground effects. So the larger one is a little bit better um, for something like that. But any of the 250 to 300 size uh, quads, I would definitely go with the mini guy. Um, then I would get this for uh, 450, 550, uh, anywhere around there, or any of the hexes. Um, this would be a really good option. And then if you do uh, aerial photography, or have something a little bit bigger like my uh, FPV Dream Machine right here. Um, I would definitely get this one. So that's the uh, two foot, three foot, and four foot. Awesome equipment, amazing quality. Uh, everything is precision stitched. Um, metal grommets in the corners, so you're not just poking holes in some fabric. This thing is uh, very nice quality. And anyone that's looking to protect their equipment should definitely get something like this. So. Thanks for watching and check back soon for another quick tip of the week.